Welcome to the CAD portion of Pro Landscape. You'll find that Pro Landscape's planner is the easiest to use and most landscaper friendly CAD program you can find. The reason for that is we've customized all the terminology for landscaping. So draw property line, draw foundation walls, draw pavers, edging, retaining walls, grass mulch, draw legend, title block, etc. So landscape terminology making it really easy to use. Before we start, let's talk about a couple quick things. First, all the plants you're going to find are organized by a climate zone. So we set our climate zones regardless of where we are in the world. Once we set those, we can select one or more zones to filter the plants that work in our area. Second, uh, over here on the right, these are the symbols for all the plants. They're linked to the pictures that we have in the photo imaging side. All the symbols are customizable. Uh, but they're scaled to the mature size of the plant and we can also view those by common name or botanical name whichever we prefer. Finally the uh, is getting started this is our paper size and scale we can we can we can create custom sizes but we can change the size and scale at any point in time uh, simply just clicking right here makes it easy to start drawing and then changing for example a uh, something you might print on your local printer in a small size to a uh, D-sized CAD drawing that you want to take somewhere and have uh, printed on a, a larger printer like a plotter in just a few mouse clicks. So there's a couple ways to start. We can start just a new drawing here, click something like property line and start drawing. We can we can open any kind of a CAD file from AutoCAD uh, either in DWG or DXF or in this case let's say we have a survey so what we're going to do is simply scale a plot plan. So we'll choose that option here. Now it says it's going to ask us to browse for the file. So we browse here. Um, this is a PDF of the property that we want to we want to landscape. If it's a PDF that's generated out of a CAD file, we can actually use it as is. This one happened to be one that, one that was scanned, or we take our digital camera and take a picture of it, and we bring that in, and then we scale it off one known measurement. So here's our survey here. We click next. We give it an approximate size um, of the width, and we want to do this in portrait mode. So we'll do portrait, and then we'll click finish here, and that brings it in. Now it's not scaled at the moment, so we zoom in here just using the wheel and the mouse. And right here is 119 feet. So we're going to click this point here, and this point here, and it's going to pop up a box that says how long, and that's that's. 119 we'll put in the 0.38 and we can say feet now if we're doing metric we can certainly do that as well everything here can be done in metric as well and we click OK and we've just scaled that now to test it we can do a simple inquire on the distance and we can click on this point and this point down here and it's telling we're 119 feet 6 inches full. we're off by a couple inches um, that could be just where I've clicked um, as opposed to uh, the actual scale of the drawing. And up here uh, is 88 feet um, and we're a little bit again within 6 inches on a 80 or 100 foot line. It's probably close enough for, for the landscaping that we're going to do. So now what we're going to do is simply trace this out and then we'll delete it because we really don't want to landscape on top of this. So I simply click this property line tool and let's start with the property line. I click here and I just drag out my property line. So I'm just clicking points here. Now this is a little bit of a curve here. We could try to try to click along there and angle it but there's a, an easier way. Uh, we'll just cut the corner here and we'll come back up here. And now for this corner what I can do is I can simply double click on that line to, to edit it. If I hold the control key it'll bend that line in. Now let's zoom in on the, the house itself and I click on the foundation wall tool and what I'm going to do now is just click a point here, a starting point, I come down here and I'm just going to follow my measurements. Uh, we can type them in if we want to but because we're tracing out something we know is scaled it makes it a little bit easier and faster just to go over this and so we'll come around here and there's my completed house shell. 
so we zoom out on that. Let's go ahead and draw in the driveway. So let me uh, come up here. We'll zoom in to where we can work in an area. It's nice to zoom in just so we can see exactly what we're doing here. And this is a uh, closed paver tool, but since the driveway is really a rectangle, we'll just go to the draw menu. And the draw menu is very English-like command, so it makes it easy to learn. And we'll we'll just draw a rectangle. So I'll click on this corner here, and then I'll just drag it down here, and we will draw our basic driveway. If we need to, we can we can adjust this slightly this way. Um, Double clicking lets us edit the vertices if we want to get more specific with that. And then we'll zoom in here. Uh, we'll draw the little, the front stoop right here, the same way. Just draw that in. And then let's go back and draw the sidewalk. There's a number of ways to do it. There's a paver path tool here, which we can, we can draw a, a paver. We can add a soldier course to it if we wanted to. Um, but for this one, let's go ahead and just draw an edge of that paver, and we'll. Uh, We'll do polylines, so we'll do straight lines here. We can select our line type, and I'm just going to draw a point here. I come over here, and then I'm going to do the same thing, kind of cut this corner here, and then come up here, like so. Let's draw another one now. We'll, we'll come over here. We'll do the same thing. We'll come to this edge here. We'll we'll drop this way and come up here. If we double click on this line, we can do the same thing. Hold the control key. We can bend that into here and we can do the same with this one here bend that here. Now that's our uh, our sidewalk. Now if we want to actually make that into what looks more like a sidewalk than just, just lines, we have a tool that lets us create a paver from a couple of edges. Any, so, we, so we select one edge and then we select the other edge and then we right click and it paver from those edges. Now if you zoom in here, we'll notice that we have a little overlap here on the sidewalk and it's really two different things, but we really just want it one. So we can select the two of them. So we have the two uh, areas of the sidewalk selected. And if we right click, we have an option to join those pavers together and you'll notice it took out the center line and now we just have one paver. And then things like the pattern itself. Um, we have a pattern here that we've, we've chosen. It's concrete. We can set the scale to a different scale. Um, but we'll get into that a little bit more later as far as changing the pattern and everything. Uh, let's come back to our plot plan and let's look in the back. And We have this patio here that's concrete. So let's go ahead and, and draw that in. Again, we can just use a, a, a rectangle paver. And we can just draw out a rectangle uh, patio. Ideally, we'd like to redo the patio, but for the right now, we're just working in the front yard, so we'll just focus on the uh, uh, working in the front yard. If I want to, I can just zoom out and see the whole page here. Um, that's really all we need right now from this survey, so we just go up here to the draw menu again, and we say plot plan, and we say we delete it, and we're left with our clean, our clean base plan. Now, if we want to, uh, it's a little bit small on the on the drawing, so we can pick a scale or we just press the auto scale button and it will select that scale for us. So I'm going to select everything here and move it up just a little bit. Maybe move it over. Um, anyway, so now we have our scale drawing and mimicking what we did there. And now it's time to do a little bit of landscaping. So in our library here, we have these are our favorites right here. Uh, these are a number of different. Um, trees. They're organized by trees, shrubs, flowers, miscellaneous outdoors, outdoor kitchens. You create your own symbols for anything. Um, but let's say that we find a, uh, a plant we want to put in. Let's just put one over here on this side of the driveway. We can just simply drag and drop that plant. Then if we need to, we, uh, we can move it. 
as I mentioned earlier, we can customize the symbols, size, color, um, type, what they look like, etc. But let's zoom in on the front area and let's do a little bit of landscaping here. Uh, for all the plants we have, again, if we right click, we can add to favorites and then they'll show up here on the first tab, making it a little bit easier to um, define those. So let's find this um, Alberta spruce and let's put one of these here in the corner and uh, let's just put some. Uh, some barberries across here and maybe some uh, some flowers here in the front just a few uh, making that pretty simple there so we have that part of it done uh, if we want to we can uh, fill that with mulch we just simply click on the fill mulch tool click inside there you notice that it filled this area with mulch a little hard to see but we have a pattern in there now when we fill that with mulch, up here on the edit bar we'll notice that we can select the mulch type. This is the type of mulch that we have, our cypress mulch is our default, but we can select any type, and our mulch depth, and Pro Landscape will automatically calculate for us uh, the coverage and the volume of mulch either in cubic yards or cubic meters. And so we have uh, that, that calculation for us. Again, intelligent calculations based on landscape items. Once we have our uh, mulch in this area here, we can simply drag out um, our plant symbols. We'll use our favorites over here on the right. And uh, we can either create the bed first with the edging or we can put in symbols first. So as an example, let's say we want to put a row of uh, these boxwood along the outside of this, uh, this sidewalk. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, there's a number of ways we could do it. We could drag a bunch out and just manually space them, but we have a nice uh, offset array tool here that lets us set the uh, the overlap between those. So let's go two feet apart and uh, a foot and a half off the sidewalk. And uh, let's uh, click a starting point here along the uh, sidewalk. And you'll notice as I drag these down, they will just follow along in a row till we get to the uh, to the end and see how many will fit. Now if we want to, while we have them all selected, if we just right click on them we can say cluster and it will take out the centers of that so we have the nice um, kind of a mass planting look on those symbols. And let's go ahead and draw on our landscape bed just so we, now that we kind of know what we want. Let's select the edging tool um, and we'll come right along here along the corner and we'll come out here like so, curve this back in and then we'll just come right along the side of those uh, boxwoods. So there's our edging. Now we can always double click and we can edit that anytime we want. Um, changing the angles of anything, curving it. If we want to pull it out and add more plants, we can certainly do that as well. So once we have that finished, let's uh, let's just put some more plants in. So we'll put in this uh, dogwood here on the corner. Um, maybe we'll put some uh, azaleas along the uh, along the back here. in some of those. Let's put in uh, let's put in some junipers in here in front of those. And let's put in some flowers across the front. Um, maybe these daylilies. Again, if we want to zoom in a little bit, we can uh, put some of these in here. Again, we can overlap these if we want, um, as many as we want. And again, it will create a, a mass planning if we want to do uh, the clustering. And we just we can select one of them. We can say we want to just select all the same symbol and then we right click and cluster making it really fast to go ahead and and, and do the clustering uh, and then in this area here we 
we'll put in in this area we'll put in some more flowers in here like so and we can con continue to add plants we'll put in the uh, just to tie it all together a few more of these boxwoods underneath over here again any of those we can cluster together another nice thing about pearl landscape is that for any plant that we select we can right click on it and select the size and that'll give us the uh, the size of the actual plant that's going to go into the into our estimate because we are creating an estimate at the same time that we do this let's go ahead and fill this area with some mulch here so we click on this we have some mulch here we click there that kind of fills that area and one more time we click here Now if we sim simply select the uh, the mulches that we have, since we have a couple of different ones that overlap here, select all of them and then we just right click and we can say join those together and it will join those into one mulch area. Again we can select the mulch, if we hit inquire it will tell us that we have uh, about two yards of mulch in that area. We can annotate plants. We can simply select any plant, right click, uh, say we want to annotate it. It's going to ask us if we want the common name, botanical name, we want a picture. We can put pictures on here of the plants. Um, and we click OK and it will label that. Uh, shrink the font down here. We can annotate everything all at once. So that's an easy way to, uh, to annotate the plants without actually typing anything in. But typically, what we want to do is uh, create a legend so let's just say draw a legend here this gives us the options we can number the symbols uh, we can show common name botanical name the size the height width price quantity etc and in any order we can even annotate non plants like the pavers and whatnot so let's go ahead and uh, click that right there that's our legend so we will shrink that down and we put it over here on the side of the drawing like so. We couldn't even put it in the backyard since we're not doing that. But as you can see here, it's it's labeled everything for us um, with the uh, with the pictures and the symbols uh, as far as what's there, counted everything accurately. And then we can do a, uh, a title block. So let's put a title block on here. Uh, we're going to do a portrait mode since this is a portrait. Um, put a border on it. We click Next. Um, the name of the project is the Smith Front Foundation. And we click next and we give it a drawing number and click finish and it will go ahead and put automatically put the scale um, that we see right here is the same scale that we have up here at the top on the drawing. So that's an example of a title block. We can customize them so we can put our own logo on there if you want to. Um, a couple other things about uh, creating a bid and, and then we'll uh, We'll finish this part of the video. Now this sidewalk was already here so if I, I simply right click on um, the sidewalk I can say that's part of the uh, existing landscaping so that wouldn't come over to my bid. Same with the patio. So we select the patio we right click and we say existing landscaping because Pearl Landscape is going to calculate everything that we've drawn um, but obviously the uh, these paver areas were already there and uh, if we're not going to redo them they'll part, make them part of the existing landscape. If we have a tree in the front yard, for example, that's part of the landscaping, we can indicate that as uh, part of the existing landscaping. So that's a simple uh, look at, uh, at creating a, a simple CAD drawing. We have a, a couple more examples I could show. Um, we have, uh, you know, we can obviously do, do larger, more detailed drawings. Uh, we could take that same drawing, we can make it into a nice color rendered drawing. Um, and because on all the drawings we have layers, we, we can certainly do um, irrigation plans as well um, as part of the landscaping. But for now, that's it on this uh, video. That's a quick look at using Pro Landscape Planner and all the, uh, the features and how easy it is to use. Thanks for watching.